In a world of gentleness and traps, violence and cruelty, my channel is dedicated to uncovering and explaining criminal cases in East Asian countries, with a particular focus on significant cases in China. Following the previous video discussing the Beijing Daxing family massacre, let's delve into the story of Li Lei. Li Lei had attempted in various ways to gain the approval of his family, whether by opening a hair salon, a restaurant, or by generously helping others to build a good reputation. However, despite his efforts, he never received the affirmation he sought from his family. In his eyes, he considered himself a complete failure. Simple praises were long overdue, and Li Lei found himself in the depths of despair. Describing the feeling upon entering his home, he said, as soon as I entered that door, the atmosphere was completely different. I felt that the people at home did not get along well with those outside. The moment I stepped into the house, the overwhelming pressure almost made my head explode, not just the issues of various trivial matters. After killing his family, Li Lei anxiously contemplated the future of his two children. He thought, with no one left in the family, the children will suffer in the future. It's better to end it all now. On the balcony, he cried on the sofa for four or five hours, his thoughts in chaos. He repeatedly pondered, seemingly seeing no other way out. Ultimately, Li Lei once again grasped a knife and entered his parents' room. The room only contained two sleeping children dreaming dreams they would never wake up from. He closed his eyes tightly, exerting all his strength, his mind blank, without a trace of energy left. In that moment, he had completely forgotten about humanity. At that time, in the heat of the moment, with bloodshot eyes, he couldn't remember closing his eyes. Unable to bear watching his children lying there, he heartlessly wielded the knife, not willing to witness it. Instead, he closed his eyes and did it. The autopsy report revealed that Li Lei's son had been repeatedly stabbed in the chest and abdomen with a sharp instrument, his neck cut. The liver ruptured, leading to death from acute hemorrhagic shock. Li Lei's uncle, in tears while being interviewed, said, Really, I can't believe my nephew, I really can't believe it's my nephew. Six people, my little grandson had just started walking a little over a week, my elder grandson had just started first grade, only a few months, first grade at six, how could he do such a thing? During the prosecutor's visit to the detention center, when seeing Li Lei, his gaze remained firm, without a hint of wavering. He politely confessed to the facts related to the case. While he was clear-minded and cooperative in the investigation, he remained tight-lipped about other aspects. Throughout the case review, Li Lei did not change his confession, admitting all the facts. He stated that, aside from pity for his two sons, he did not regret killing the others. After being detained for seven months, the court held a trial for this case. Li Lei, dressed in designer clothing gifted by friends, entered the courtroom, deliberately avoiding the gaze of many friends and relatives in the audience. What his friends saw was the angelic side of Li Lei, generous, easygoing, especially loyal, a reliable good brother. In 2007, when old Fong was diagnosed with leukemia, during the hospitalization, Li Lei and his wife were busy helping with affairs and providing financial support. In the eyes of other relatives, Li Lei was a person who paid great attention to etiquette. When his mother-in-law moved to Beijing, he tirelessly carried boxes of belongings, always at the forefront. In the eyes of his business partners, Li Lei was generous, easygoing, a decisive and responsible business partner with a well-thought-out plan and a wide network in the business world. Just like the character Two-Face in the movie The Dark Knight, one side is an angel, and the other side is a demon. Using the flip of a coin to decide his actions, when the just side appears, he convinces himself to stop the crime, when the dark side appears, he tries his best to defend his wrongdoing. The internal struggle between good and evil continues. Faced with the prosecutor's questioning, Li Lei did not shy away from his crimes. The friends and family attending the trial were shocked to hear his confession. Until this moment, Li Lei's dual personality truly merged into one. The cruel demon and the righteous angel are both him. 
This is the complete Li Lei. In the face of the final judgment, Li Lei did not appeal, only seeking a quick resolution, hoping to end it all as soon as possible. The seven months of detention were more painful for him than death, as his family's love was constantly judging him. He would often wake up in a startle from dreams where his father returned, recalling the anxious expression and tears in his mother's eyes when he left home at the age of 17. When Meng Jiangang got married, his wife always carried the fragrance of shampoo, a beautiful testimony to their joint struggles. He also dreamt of taking his eldest son to restaurants, where all friends found the boy incredibly cute. When his younger son first learned to speak, his first words were dad. However, more than seven months ago, Li Lei destroyed the person who loved him the most, and he remained indifferent to it. Now, these expressions of love had turned into a sharp knife, deeply piercing his heart. In remorse and anger, he felt an unprecedented fear, the cruelest judgment upon him. He was in pain, unable to extricate himself, emitting cries like a demon in the darkness. After the trial, Li Lei gave an interview to reporters. The mention of his grandmother made him involuntarily cover his face with his hands, crying uncontrollably, as if he had turned back into that child who had done something wrong. Is my grandmother still well? Is she still as plump? he asked. In the winter of 1980, amidst heavy snowfall, the Lee family welcomed a newborn baby boy, whom they named Lee Lay Three Stones, symbolizing a down to earth nature. This name carried the simple expectation of the elderly, not aspiring for great success, but hoping he would be a grounded individual. Li Lei grew up with his grandmother, receiving special affection as the eldest son. Despite the hardships of rural life, his grandparents always saved their food for him. No matter how big his mistakes were, they never had the heart to scold him. This indulgence made Li Lei arrogant and unruly during the eight years he spent with them, and his father's expectations were left unfulfilled. Therefore, the elderly decided to bring his son back, subjecting him to strict discipline. However, the father's alcohol-induced abuse towards his wife, coupled with complaints, turned the once mischievous Li Lei into introverted, arrogant, and stubborn, even leading him to contemplate patricide during his adolescence. As Li Lei matured, with the passage of time, he began to understand his parents' struggles. Yet, whenever faced with his father's beatings, family discrimination, disdain, and his wife's constant calculations, he felt extreme psychological frustration. His abilities went unrecognized, and his personality was not respected. His lack of communication skills made it impossible for him to address these issues, deepening the resentment and pain within the family. In moments of extreme despair, he even once abandoned himself, indulging in a life that turned his inner world into an erupting volcano. It was only on that fateful night that Li Lei took extreme actions, putting an end to it all. Defendant Li Lei, you are requested to defend yourself on whether your actions constitute a crime and, if so, what type of crime. He requests the judge to pronounce the verdict sooner and put an end to all of this. On the morning before the execution at 10 a.m., Li Lei is once again brought to the court for the last meeting with his family. Before leaving the detention center, he specifically asks the prison guard for a shave. Besides Li Lei's scheduled execution, there are four other inmates approved for execution, each entering the designated room in the court, looking through the glass at their parents and loved ones who came to bid farewell. Li Lei is listed first on the meeting schedule, but once the meeting starts, he is arranged to go last. He likes to wear sportswear, a blue sports shirt after the incident, and on the day of the trial and yesterday, he wore a white sports t-shirt. During the 20-minute wait, Li Lei finishes a pack of cigarettes, leaving only two. The nearby police officers remind him not to smoke, but as long as there are cigarettes, he won't refuse. It should be his last time smoking. When meeting his uncle and aunt, his words are more about guilt and pleading for forgiveness. He takes the cigarette offered by others, says thank you, and the nearby police immediately advise against smoking. Li Lei responds, saying it's the last time, no chance tomorrow. How do you know it's tomorrow? 
It's certain, everyone knows the meeting the day before, and the next day, hmm, just cooperate a bit, it'll be over, no chance for appeals or postponements, no grudges, just a few shots, and it's done. Do you regret it now? Honestly, who wouldn't regret it? In the heat of the moment, my mind was clouded, and I got carried away. If you could live again, what would you do? Live well, make something of myself. Who do you think will come to see you today? Well, Grandma is still 80, she lives with my uncle. This matter probably wasn't told to them, they might not dare to tell him. If Grandma comes, she definitely won't be able to say anything. The rest is my aunt, she's pulling my uncle to come together. Have you thought about how to divide your property under your name? I don't know, haven't written a will yet. Give more to Grandma, let her give it to whoever she wants. And on your wife's side, give more to her parents. I'm sorry, to them. After meeting his uncle and aunt, Yulay mentioned that his keys and personal belongings were left in the detention center. He requested his aunt and uncle to help bring those things back home. He specifically reminded the two elders to take care of their health and not to blame him anymore. After the meeting, Li Lei suddenly knelt down, continuously kowtowing three times to his aunt and uncle through the glass. At this moment, tears streamed down his face, and his whole body became limp, requiring the assistance of nearby police officers to stand up. On September 16, 2011, Li Lei was executed. As time passed, all friends and family tried hard to forget everything that happened here. However, Li Lei's grandmother still waits at home every day, wondering and asking why her son and grandson don't come to see her. Li Lei had previously said that if he could live again, he would live a good life and make something of himself. Unfortunately, there is no time machine or regret medicine in this world, and tragedies caused by family disputes are not uncommon. Communication is crucial, even with close relationships, mutual respect and understanding are essential. The tragedy today is not solely the fault of the perpetrator but a problem within the entire family. We are not defending the victim or blaming the victim, our only goal is to prevent such tragic cases from happening again. Subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.